Welcome to Farm Factor. Let's join Dwayne Taves and Jimmy Emmons as they discuss tips to start using cover crops. Dwayne Taves joining you once again with Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to talk about uh, cover crops and soil health with Jimmy Emmons, uh, Leedy, Oklahoma. And Jimmy, certainly uh, you had a chance to talk to some producers in Kansas and uh, share your story about cover crops and what they've done for your operation. Uh, some interesting times that we live in and some tremendous opportunities. Oh yeah, the, the opportunity for cover crops is just really beginning. Uh, we're seeing lots of opportunities to graze, to integrate cattle back into the system. Uh, we've got away from that over the years and we've gotten typically grain, grain, grain. And in these low prices of grain, uh, you can see what's happened economically. So there's lots of opportunity for cover crops to integrate cattle back in that system. We think about uh, making that decision to do so. Uh, a lot of growers uh, that were here in attendance today uh, may be hesitant. To, really, the take-home message was start small, learn what works for you. There's no cookie-cutter approach when it comes to soil health and cover crops. Oh, yeah. All we, no matter in life, if you want to be successful, you got to start small. Everybody wants to start with a four-wheel drive tractor and a 50-foot plow and go to farm. And if you do that, you're not going to be successful. In cover crops, it's about designing the system for your place, for your farm, for your needs. So I always recommend start off small, leave some check strips, do some double, make sure that your seeding rate is, is where it needs to be on your place. And if you'll do that, then you'll be successful and don't give up the first year, two or three, because it's going to take three years to get the system going. I was really impressed. Uh, one of the things that you shared was the amount of water holding capacity relative to organic uh, content. Uh, that's a big key as far as what we're trying to accomplish here. You bet. We looked at the plots out here today. We had a pretty good shower this morning, but that wet in front was just about that shallow and hit a hard pan and uh, quit going in. Uh, it's all about infiltration. One uh, percent organic matter will hold 27,500 gallons. If you can increase that half percent to a percent, my gosh, you double the amount of water you have to work with. Besides the nutrients, there's $700 worth of nutrients in the organic side for every one percent. So just think if you double or triple that organic matter in a few years, what you can do with water and nutrients. One of the big keys for some guys to be uh, getting past the fact that we're using water but and eventually saving more water than what we would lose to evaporation. Yeah, the, the, the big question about cover crops, cover crops is always cost and how much water we're using. And uh, we've proven, proven it at our farm with, by pulling cores where we're out on water. If we're going to graze that for an extended period of 60 days or so, yeah, we're going to use an extra couple of inches of water. But we're gaining that back in the next three months and then getting ahead and winding up in the spring with three to five more inches. And that's making the end difference on that crop. So that water infiltration is, is it, like I said in the meeting this morning, it's easy to see that rain coming down. It's hard to see that evaporation going up, but it's even harder to see that water going in. We want to try to divert it in a terrace around instead of getting it into the soil. Our thanks to Jimmy Emmons, Leedy, Oklahoma, joining us uh, with a discussion about uh, cover crops and what it may mean for your operation. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Folks, come back after these messages from our sponsors for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Visit our picturesque town on the Santa Fe Trail for the Council Grove Fall Festival featuring the Voices of the Wind People pageant on the banks of the Neosho River, September 16 and 17.